on Netflix I watched from 1978, The Fury. Now why did I watch this? Because recently I reviewed Splash and I thought, okay, let's look at some more Daryl Hannah material. Because she was easy on the eyes. And this was her first movie, just a real small role as this high school girl. You know, and not really like crazy hot by any means here, just kind of a little awkward phase, a little awkward teen years right here. So anyways, this is directed by Brian De Palma, and it is sort of a companion piece to his film Carrie. This is not based on any material by Stephen King, and it goddamn shows, because this movie is a mess. This is maybe two or three different stories converging in a bad way. Uh, it's it's Kirk Douglas as a kind of uh, James Bondian sort of uh, government badass. And then we have his son who is a confused and tormented psychic. Let's just call them psychics. I mean, they have telekinesis abilities and other, uh, other traits. And then we have this girl, Amy Irving, from The Shining completely different character here still a high school girl and she's also got telekinesis so we start off we're with Kirk Douglas and his son not Michael Douglas and they're in the Middle East I think it just says mid east mid spaced east here and they're swimming around he's talking to this government guy he's talking about how his son's going to a school in Chicago and then all of a sudden these Arab guys show up start shooting the place they're firing Kirk Douglas, he fires back. He seems to die in a boat, a raft that blows up. So then his son gets carried off, and I guess we're in Chicago now. And then we have um, some guy who has uh, some telekinesis abilities. He overhears Amy Irving, and, that, and he finds out that she has these abilities, and that might lead to where Kirk Douglas' son is. I don't remember the guy's name here, to be honest with you. But, uh, so, as we continue here, it really shifts over to, like, Amy Irving. And it's like, oh, these, you, you had a uh, t telekinesis instructor show up at school and show you how something works. And that you had super abilities at this. They're going to take you to this other school. And you're kind of tormenting this girl that was bullying you. You made her bleed out her nose. And this is a like Carrie, in a way where Carrie was misunderstood and she was the only one with these abilities and she unleashed them, she didn't have any mentor. This is about that mentor relationship with the telekinetic uh, teens. But a lot too much of the movie is government spy badass working in some action. Like Kirk Douglas gets into like this random ass car chase, steals a cop car, from a lean Dennis Franz and, and gets in this chase and it's fairly stupid and there's a lot of terrible meant to be comedy moments that are just not pulled off with the right timing you know made for Brian De Palma this is not the right thing for you but you can see some of those early kernels of the sort of trying to be a spy like thriller that are then showed off better in Mission Impossible in 1996. So a good 18 years later. But anyways, uh, yeah, he gets in this car chase and, and then Dennis Ron's like, please don't hurt my new car. I'm thinking, are you a cop? What's the deal here? This is your car or patrol car? That's a piece of shit, either way. So we have that go down and then we've got we're back with Amy Irving, and she's at this new school, and she's having visions about this guy, Kirk Douglas' son, who died there. Only then she finds out he's not dead. She can kind of receive his messages that he doesn't seem to be wanting to send to her. And she wants to meet him. She seems to want to hook up with him, have him as a boyfriend. But Kirk Douglas comes to the rescue. Uh, the nurse that was helping... Amy Irving gets killed in, in the rescue process, and it's so drawn out and, and done without any sound. It doesn't feel right, but it will kind of bring to mind those revelation sequences where Tom Cruise was figuring out who was behind his getting set up, and how those just kind of had musical score playing over them in sort of slow motion. 
it will bring that to mind. Well, Amy Irving, Kirk Douglas get away, and they go to the place where Kirk Douglas' son has been held, and he's a total douche for no reason. He's vindictive about everything. Like, these, the bad guys killed his father, but he's never really under some instruction to kill Arabs. Oh, but then he wigs out at a carnival, an indoor carnival, I guess, in Chicago, and kills some Arabs. And it's like, well, that was explained, except it wasn't. And then he's doing his, his like, nurse instructor chick. Uh, I know I've seen her around somewhere before. I'm not going to mess with it. She's no big deal. Uh, and then he goes and kills her because he's like, hey, the table here is set for four. You guys are going to get rid of me and bring in that girl. Yeah, Amy Irving. So he hasn't met her and he feels like she's his replacement. So now he's got to kill everybody. Kirk Douglas goes into the house. It's almost like a haunted house ordeal. And the guy's like flying up in the air and he attacks Kirk Douglas and they fall. And they're headed out this window and they're hanging onto the awning. And Kirk Douglas is like, hey, give me your hand. He's like, screw that. I'm going to try to rip your face off. And then he drops him. The guy falls to his death. Eyes glow as he looks at Amy Irving. I think her eyes glow back. Like, what's the significance here? And then Kirk Douglas is like, ah, I'm angry. And then throws himself off the roof and dies too. And then Amy Irving is all like, okay, uh, I'm, I'm now uh, at the, the uh, bad guy who, who had his arm in a sling and, and was in cahoots to capture Kirk Douglas' son. He, he was kind of like the villain this whole time kind of shit. And he, you know, a guy with a black sling on a shot up arm, you know he's got to be the bad dude. And also Kirk Douglas even said something stupid about this earlier. He said, and mask him about his arm. Well, what about his arm? I killed it. Yeah, you can kill an arm, sure. So as stupid as all this shit is, Amy Irving's in bed and she's like waking up and this guy's like, hey, uh, you're with me now. Everything's gonna be all right. You do whatever you want. And she's like, no, I don't trust you. It makes him bleed a whole lot and then explodes him like scanners. Except scanners has a lot less issues with it. Yeah, I feel like they didn't they didn't go about correctly describing what was going on here. The glowing eyes, what part of telekinesis does that even affect right there? Where does this come about? It is too many different movies trying to be one movie. Uh, the Fury is quite the mess. I give it two out of four stars.